Hi everyone! It is time for the Great Covers project and this is a special weekend focusing on Brothers in Arms. Well, as you know, this whole Great Covers project is a collaborative effort with my um, community of patrons and we always have this um, poll on Patreon which helps us choose which ones we're going to cover. And interestingly, this time there was a tie. So we are going to be treating both of them. This weekend it's going to be Brothers in Arms. And Brothers in Arms, the original, was one which I did fairly early in my journey into rock music, uh, more than a year ago now. And it was one that left a real impression on me. I really loved it. I enjoyed exploring it. And you can always check out my first listen and in-depth here. Find these links here because, well, it'll help you understand perhaps my responses now as I explore these covers of the piece. The first one is going to be Metallica's cover. It is a live performance, October 28, 2007, in Mountain View, California. It was the 21st annual Bridge School Benefit at the Shoreline Amphitheater. The Bridge School Benefit was an annual charity concert usually held in Mountain View, California, every October at the Shoreline Amphitheater from 1986 until 2016, with the exception of 1987. The concerts lasted the entire weekend and were organized by musicians Neil Young, Mm hmm that's a big name, and his wife Peggy Young. An annual Bay Area highlight, the concerts were billed online as the primary means of funding for the Bridge School. Wow. Over both days, the reserved seats alone brought in well over a million dollars every year. This is a big event. Partial proceeds benefited the Bridge School, which assists children with severe physical impairments and complex communication needs. What a great charity project and the blending of music and education and um, and Metallica here is participating in this. That's that's wonderful. Let's see how it sounds. I remember when I did my first listen, I commented on how it had a sort of almost Scottish Highlands lilt to it. And now I'm listening to Metallica. I've had less than a handful of experiences with Metallica in this journey so far. The first one was um, And Justice For All, and there have been a couple since. And they have a very powerful, aggressive sound. And so I'm a bit surprised and delighted to find that when they start this song, they 
they do it in such a way that really conjures up the original um, attitude, the atmosphere. And I'm listening to the singer. And I'm fascinated because, speaking of Scottish Highlands, I don't know if he's imitating a little bit of a Scottish brogue, but there's a little bit of something that actually makes me think I could almost be le listening to a Scottish singer. Not quite, but there's something there which really surprised me. And it's so interesting that they pulled that influence when they could have taken it any other direction, but this is how they chose to open the piece. Really nice. I'm going to back up to where the voice begins again, just to enjoy it one more time, then we'll keep going. It's mostly when he sings oh. now for me. But my home is in the home. My home. Always will be someday or a someday to the valleys and your farms, and you'll no longer be no longer to be brothers in arms. of destruction Baptism of fire I witnessed your suffering As the battle raged high And though they did hurt me so bad Through the fear and the lie Not desert me, my brothers in arms. There are so many different worlds. pause it there because wow this singer Vlad who is the singer here it's James Hetfield James Hetfield I guess I've heard him singing with I mean he's the singer for Metallica I've, I've heard him singing well his mother was a light opera singer and actually he is of um, English German Irish Irish and Scottish descent Maybe he was able to pull something out of his family background there because there there are places where I was like, oh, what is this? But more than that, okay, I have to say that so far through this song, this is my favorite Metallica performance. I I really... I'm enjoying it. Musically, artistically, emotionally, um, it, 
I'm really excited about how well they're handling the melodic material and how well they are they are shaping the music and it has a different feel than the original definitely but it stands on its own two feet incredibly well um it's not the kind of piece Metallica would have composed on their own right but supposing they had, I could totally believe that this was an original because it sounds so compelling, so convincing, and it fits so incredibly well. I love the way that Hetfield is is shaping and coloring his voice in different moments to, to convey different ideas. And um, with the original, if you listen to my in-depth uh, video, I was talking about how the guitar and the voice are serving as partners, but that one is a much more gentle, reflective, meditative performance, start to finish. It never really rises and becomes powerful and strong because, of course, if you remember, my interpretation of, of that was that it's, it's um, the voice of the soldier dying on the battlefield um, and his life is fading away but now here there is um, I could even say some some more meat to it sonically um, and and energy wise but it fits it fits incredibly well it's um it's building us up and it's it's taking us to certain points within the text within the lyrics where it wants to make a point and it is making a point incredibly well in those moments i guess this is one that i'm going to return to and and, and listen several times over but i'm going to keep going now since i need to get to the end of the piece <laughs> Isn't this incredibly appropriate, the way that his he goes into his powerful, more screaming type voice? And I don't mean that term screaming with any disrespect, but I'm, I'm describing the different types of voice he's using. More screaming type voice when he gets to the verse that says, Now the sun's gone to hell.
Dire Straits. All right. I think I think we'll do some. We're gonna okay. cover this I guess band this called is, Metallica now. I guess this is the end of the piece, there, right? So I counted eleven repetitions of "We're all fools." That is the point he was driving towards in the entire piece. Well, it makes sense with Metallica. They've they've made some pretty powerful statements about justice and war and other such things. So um, I guess another one I listened to was their song called One. So they're going to pick up on this line, which in Dire Straits original version was very subtly stated. Um, not any less powerfully, but powerful in, in a more gentle, perhaps understated manner. Here, Metallica takes that line, picks it up, puts it in front of our face and says, I'm going to scream it in your face until you understand and until it really sinks into you that we are all fools. You don't have to be an intellectual. You don't have to be a student. You don't even have to be paying attention. I'm going to make you pay attention. And, and, so he takes that line and he stretches it out and improvises over it. Of course you can hear the the blues roots in this piece of music, but you also hear the the guitar, the plucked fingered guitar was was kind of kind of a blend and tending towards fiddle style or even even um I'm just going to say in general folk style from the British Isles because I don't want to place it too strongly as a Scottish piece, although I feel it's very appropriate to say that that element is intentionally put in here. And we all know that that the Scottish-Irish um, musical traditions are what seeded the Appalachian um, and fiddle music traditions here in this country. So there's, there's this long line of connections, which um, in a way is irrelevant. But at the same time, we hear it here and it's all mixed and blended together in this fabulous manner. And, and, uh, but, but this, this, uh, the way the message is built up in this piece is incredibly well done. Well, would you believe it? Um, here I've run into a Metallica piece that I feel like I want to hear again. Not just, okay, I can listen to that again and appreciate it uh, for its message or for its musical content and expression, but perhaps I'm, I don't love the style. This one, the balance, the, the performance, the voice, the instrumentation, everything worked so incredibly well. And I am going to be listening to this a number of times over. I don't know if it will make my favorites list in the long run, but there is a good possibility it might at this point, which would be quite a surprise. Did you ever imagine I would say that a Metallica piece could make my favorites list? Here I am. I think this is a great cover. I think it's a great cover because of how eloquently it expresses the sentiments of the original lyrics, how respectfully it handles the musical content and the message of it, at the same time how clearly independently they have chosen their way of expressing. They changed a few things. Turning that into a long um, riff on, on we are fools to make war. We are fools to make war. We are fools. We are fools. We are fake fools to make war on our brothers in arms. You know, that wasn't there in the original, but it fits. And the build-up to that point is also incredibly compelling. So, yeah, 
great cover. And thank you to my community for voting this and choosing it for me. I'm really happy to have heard it. And now I'm curious to hear the other cover of this same piece, Dire Straits Brothers in Arms, which was also chosen for me for this weekend. And I'm going to listen to it. And for that, I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>